I love learning about the behind the scenes of the making of movies and TV. Uh, for each of you, what do you think might surprise fans to learn about the actual making of Discovery? I think I think one of the things that that's was most surprising to me is just how enormous and immersive our sets are. That you you really can suspend disbelief and get lost in there. And now that we're using this new AR wall technology, it's even more so. So it's it's a great uh, set for for an actor, right? You can just disappear into it. That's what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, sorry. That's, but that's why I went first. <laughs> well, I, but I, mean, I, think, I think I think do I do believe most people would imagine, you know, there's so much CGI and so many things that yes, there when you when we're looking at the view screen of the bridge, that's, you know, we're looking at a green screen because then they fill it in later, but everything that's on the bridge is you can touch and see. The only, the only time that's not the case is if we have a hologram. Everything else is so there for us. It's tactile. Yeah. And that's I think rare yeah. and may surprise people. Yeah. Yeah. It's you do you said get lost. I but I do like get lost on our <laughs> ship, which is like crazy to be able to say. Four years it's, later I still need somebody to guide me around. Yeah. Wow. Can I do a follow-up? I'm curious what this AR thing that you mentioned is. Mm -hmm. uh, can you describe that? Because I'm not sure if I'm familiar with this. So it's a technology they used in, in the Mandalorian. So oh, that's a, you, yeah. I, so it's that. It's that. Yeah. It's, it's an LED screen that covers about two hundred and sixty degrees. Yeah, it looks kind of like if you were looking at it from above, it would look like a, an upside down U ish. Yeah. And so there's a set built in the middle of that space, and on all the wall around it is is floor to ceiling images, and it. And it's the, the, the what really makes it effective for this purpose, and it gets really techno, but the if the camera is looking at this part of the wall, this image of the wall then is extra augmented, extra high def, and then it also alters its depth and moves with the camera as the camera's moving. So it's incredibly responsive. So it just always is appropriate. It, so it doesn't look just like a painted backdrop. Sure. But if you're not careful, you will get some motion sickness <laughs> if you look at the screen and it starts moving in a weird way, which it does. Yeah. But it lets you be on another planet and really look like you're looking at the horizon of that planet. Right. Instead of yeah. looking at a, at a tennis ball and say, oh, there's a planet over here, you can actually see it. Yeah, it's, it's the volume technology that Mandalorian is using. It, right. it's, it, it, it's amazing because I think that really opens, if you're using the technology, it really opens the door on what you can do this season that maybe you couldn't do in previous seasons. Yeah, exactly. and our AR wall is, sub I'm not to brag, but our <laughs> wall is substantially, substantially larger than any other wall. Our wall is better. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the things that I think that the trailer uh, uh, touches on, and, from, and this is what I'm gathering from the footage I've seen, is that this season is about you guys having to overcome like a science problem. It's not like a villain. It's you guys trying to work together, the galaxy coming together to, to solve a problem. And uh, I guess, what can you tease about season four? And am I right about this? You're right about that. I think it's in a way, it's it's our writers taking what's been going on in our world, which is the science problem that happened out of nowhere that felt random, that felt, uh, you know, extreme that had this incredible damaging force and every all these scientists around our world had to come together to try to solve it that's very much what season four is also about and the part of part of this particular problem that we're dealing with in season four is also it's incredibly unpredictable and chaotic um so it's not yeah it doesn't have like an, a malevolent force as in a villain, you know, pointing a finger at a at a planet and saying you are doomed. It's just this thing that's happening that's causing so much chaos and, and destruction um, that you know that requires people to come together. I also think what's great about it and the parallels that I appreciate from the season to our real life is that because it's science and it's something that we've never seen before. For instance, like a new virus that's never been seen before. There that when there's new science. We have to be agile enough to respond to new circumstances and perhaps change the way that we deal with it because we have new information. But that's how science works. You know, you're not something that may that was true yesterday may not we may find out is different tomorrow. And so we need to be able to adjust in that way. And so um, I think that's a great lesson that that's taught uh, this season as well. I really wonder, it's making me think. 
I wonder what the percentage of Star Trek viewers that are vaccinated is, because, you know, I'll bet you it's real high. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Hope you know, so. For just, all of our sakes. Yeah, no, it's just a completely random thing that I just realized, you know, people. Anyway, um, I got to stop. And I'm just going to say again, congrats. I can't wait to watch the season. Um, and Blue, I think you talked a little too much. I would need you to take it down next time. All right. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> <They're just joking. laughs> Oh, thank you so much for your time. Seriously, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much.